In this tutorial series, we're going to introduce the concept of meshes and take a look at different ways we can create and manipulate mesh geometries in Grasshopper. So we're going to explore different patination techniques and physics simulations using Kangaroo 2. If you're a member of the different design, you'll have access to example files for this tutorial series. So go ahead and download the Rhino file called Example Mesh and open it up. There'll be a piece of geometry on the mesh layer if you turn it on here, and we'll use this mesh geometry later in the tutorial to demo a few different things. I also want to um, make sure that you've got um, the plugin called Mesh Edit installed into your Grasshopper um, plugin, because uh, we're going to use a few of these really great tools that are available in the Mesh Edit plugin um, during this tutorial. So you can find this plugin on foodforrhino.com. So I want to begin by asking what is a mesh geometry? A mesh geometry is a type of geometry where objects are approximated by breaking their surfaces into smaller parts using polygons. Now these polygons are commonly triangles, but it's also not uncommon for mesh faces in polygonal modeling to have more than three sides. If you've been modeling in Rhino for a while, you'd be familiar with the term NURBS geometry. So NURBS, or Non-Uniform Rational B-Splines, is a modeling technique that harnesses the power of mathematics to represent geometry. So let's go ahead and just create a sphere in Grasshopper. I'm just going to type in sphere, and we're going to create that sphere there. So a sphere exists nowhere in the real world. It's actually a mathematical equation. Let's just zoom in on it by right-clicking and going to zoom. There's our little sphere there. This equation, represented as a NURBS geometry, is completely smooth and has no flat faces. So the other thing I want to create, I might just move this mesh sphere over here to the side. I'll just give it a little mesh plane there. We're also going to create a mesh sphere just next to it so we can compare these two things. I'll make their radius the same, so I'll just go with about a 5.00 as a number slider there. Um, or maybe a bit smaller so we can compare them. So looking at this mesh sphere, um, this mesh sphere is actually made up from the combination of polygon faces that serve as like an approximation of this surface. And we can visualize this a bit better if we just create a face boundaries component. And what this face boundaries component does is basically breaks down the faces of a mesh. So the geometry still looks like a sphere, but if we inspect it closely, we can see the polygonal sphere is quite jagged and it's made of smaller parts. So NURBS modeling could be thought of as needing less detail to create curvatures and to be made up of a series of curved surfaces, which mathematically define the overall geometry. Whereas in contrast, mesh geometries need more detail to create curvatures and there's no true curvature on the surface. It's a collection of discrete flat faces. Now, generally speaking, NURBS modeling will be more precise, whereas polygonal modeling is easier to manipulate and use. So I'm going to delete that sphere and just delete that face boundaries, and we'll talk about this mesh component that we've just created. So a mesh can kind of be broken down into smaller parts. We've already talked about the polygons that make up those parts, but let's just look at that in a little bit more depth. I'm going to create a deconstruct mesh component. Hopefully I've spelled that right. Oh, I haven't spelled deconstruct right, so I go deconstruct uh, mesh. Oh, mesh, there it is. So it's um, got this, you know, square face and these little points with arrows on it. And what this will do is it'll just break our mesh down into kind of its constituent parts. So I'm going to plug that in here. And our mesh has um, four little outputs on the deconstruct mesh component. We have the vertices. Now, the vertices could be thought of as the points that make up the mesh itself. We then have the faces. And the faces are those polygons that we've been talking about a lot. So if we did get our face boundaries back up, you'll see that they completely align with, you know, the vertices that we've got here. So every single time there's a vertice, it's basically one of the points in the uh, mesh faces that we're having drawn. You also have a bunch of color outputs. So I could go and create what's called a mesh color component. And I could plug that into here. And by default, there's some colors input. So if I input that mesh into here now, I'll spit out a bunch of different colors. Now, the colors are me measured at each vertex. So each vertex has its own color, basically. And that's what gives the kind of colored face of each of those meshes. And then we have something called the normal. So the normals is, we've talked about this in previous tutorials, it's essentially the vector um, coming out of a certain point on a surface. So if I went and created like a... Um, vector um, display and just displayed the preview from the vertice of the normals, you'll see that it's basically a vector that um, serves as like the normal of a certain point on the face of a mesh.
So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of that. Um, and I want you to just turn on that mesh um, geometry in this example file. And we're going to reference this mesh into Grasshopper. So I'm going to create a um, mesh container. So we've used Brett containers and other containers before. So you can just create a little mesh container. I'm going to right click on this and just go set one mesh. And I'm going to select this mesh as the mesh I want to input. So I'm going to create a panel and we're going to look at what's coming out of this panel. Um, the reference mesh has 4,840 vertices and 4,000 faces. So we could go ahead and, you know, deconstruct this mesh as well. What I want to talk about this mesh um, for though is something to do with um, the makeup of its vertexes. So the way that I've gone and built this mesh is a little bit scrappy. Generally, when you have a mesh, um, vertex vertices on a face will have kind of like a shared vertice per face. Um, and basically this mesh is built quite poorly. So we actually have a few double up meshes, uh, double up vertices going on. I want you to come over to the kangaroo to, um, tab in grasshopper. So it's a native, in, it's a native plugin inside of grasshopper. And we just want to go to the, the mesh tab. And I want you to come down to where it says naked vertices. And I want you to select this component and drop it on the canvas. I'm going to plug my mesh in and then I'm going to create a point container. And we're going to have a look at what the naked points are. So naked vertices can be thought of points on a mesh or vertices on a mesh that are not surrounded entirely by faces. So you'll see these ones on the edge. We can understand why they are naked because they don't have these faces that encompass them entirely. But these ones here, um, are being, we're being told that these are naked vertices. And the reason for this is I created this mesh from a bunch of um, little mesh planes, which had 10 faces by 10 faces on them. And then I just use the join command in Rhino to join them all together. So when you do this, all it does is just create like a joined mesh, but it doesn't actually remove the double up naked vertices that you're seeing here. So if we wanted to get rid of these naked vertices, we would have to do something called a welding process. So if we come to our mesh tab and we've got our um, mesh, mesh edit plugin installed correctly, we can come down to the utilities tab and select the mesh weld vertices component. I'm going to plug that into here. In fact, I'm going to take this mesh from over over here and plug that into there. And now if I go ahead and plug my mesh into this output, you'll notice that my naked vertices are now only the vertices that are happen happening on the openings of this mesh. What this is doing is based on a tolerance, um, which is basically a measuring distance for all of the points that are basically um, overlapping. This is welding any points that are within this distance of 0 .00, 0 0.01 together to create one vertex, which basically removes removes all of our naked points uh, from this mesh geometry. So go ahead and do that because what we're going to do now is um, in the next tutorial is we're going to explore the Kangaroo 2 physics engine for Grasshopper and start simulating on this mesh. The last thing we can do is just to test this, you can kind of just plug this output mesh in and you'll see that um, we have a much lower vertex count in this output than we do in the original mesh that we had.